Now we're going to look at rearrangements of the ideal gas law to produce equations that allow us to calculate the concentration and density of a gas. To start with, we need to consider the fundamental units of concentration. Fundamentally, concentration has units of moles per volume. Both moles and volume are in the ideal gas law, so a simple rearrangement of the ideal gas law will give us a way of calculating the concentration of a gas. I would like you to rearrange the ideal gas law and derive an equation for the concentration of a gas. Please pause the video now and do this. Calculation of the density of a gas is slightly more complicated. Density is mass over volume. Mass is not in the ideal gas law, but the mass of a gas is related to the moles of that gas through the molecular mass. So to derive an equation for the density of a gas, first solve the molecular mass equation for moles, then substitute this into the ideal gas law, and finally solve for the density of an ideal gas. Please pause the video now and derive an equation for the density of a gas. What you should have derived is presented here. The concentration of a gas is given by P over RT. The density of a gas is given by PM over RT. It is interesting to note that the density of a gas is proportional to the molecular mass of that gas. This leads to the question, why do you care? Why do you care that density is proportional to molecular mass of a gas? Can you think of some examples of where the density of a gas is important? We recently did the example looking at the helium balloon ascending into the atmosphere. The reason helium floats in air is because the molecular mass of helium is 4 grams per mole and the average molecular mass of air is 29 grams per mole. Other examples are listed here. One of the examples on the previous slide was that of natural gas. Natural gas is primarily methane and ethane. However, these gases are odorless, so an odorant is added so that natural gas leaks can be detected. This example calculates the density of the gases in natural gas and compares it with the density of air. So the formula for calculating density of a gas is given by density is equal to PM over RT. And this funny looking symbol on the left hand side is the Greek letter, letter rho. Um, you can also use D for density. Both of them are commonly used, approved letters to represent density. But density is equal to this equation. I'm going to solve this for methane at SATP. At SATP, the standard pressure is one bar. Molecular mass of methane is 16 grams per mole. The value of R at SATP is 0.08314 liters bar per mole Kelvin and the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Now looking at the units, bar is going to cancel with bar, mole is going to cancel with mole, Kelvin will, with Kelvin. So the units that we are left with, grams per liter, are what we would expect for units of density. And when you substitute this into a calculator, you find out that the density of ethane is 0 0.646 grams per liter. Now, we can do the same calculations, and it's just changing the molecular mass. The values you get for ethane, methane thiol and air are given here. 1.214, 1.942, 1 
and 1.169, all with units of grams per liter. So it is clear from this that methane is substantially less dense than air, ethane is approximately the same density as air, and methane thiol is significantly more dense than air. There is actually an interesting story associated with this example. When I was at another university, they were digging in preparation of constructing a new building. The backhoe struck a 15 centimeter high pressure natural gas line. No, it didn't ignite. However, people in many campus buildings smelled natural gas and pulled the fire alarm. I want to point out at this point in time that if you do smell gas, do not pull the fire alarm. I was on the University Health and Safety Committee and the question arose, why did they smell gas in these buildings? The answer is interesting. While venting, the natural gas separated and the methane rose into the air because it is less dense than air. However, the methane thiol Methane thiol is more dense than air and settled to the ground. The methane thiol drifted along the ground and into the buildings, causing people to think that there was a natural gas leak. In reality, there was not, and there was actually no danger because the only chemical in the building was the odorant.